Welcome back to another episode of my weird journey of learning 3D animation for games. Yes, it's a series now. I just made that decision. Last time I learned about breaking bones for 3D animation and slow motion. And I made this dash animation as my first attempt of adding power to a 3D game animation. And it did surprisingly well. Especially on TikTok for some reason. I don't know what that's all about. But thank you guys. But I feel like I can do better. I'm sure there's some power here. But I want impact. And I mean impact. So that's what I'm gonna try today. Every time I watch these amazing impact moments in anime, I wish I could feel this strong in a game. It's very rare to see this level of impact in games. And I seriously wonder what's stopping game developers from doing this kind of stuff. Despite the fact that it's rare, there are some good examples. My favorite ones are the One Piece Pirate Warriors games and Demon Slayer Inukami Chronicles. These games use similar techniques and visual effects to the anime they are based on to create almost the same level of impact in game. This is the closest you can get to actually feeling as powerful as Luffy, Sinitsu when he sleeps, or the, that one guy from Demon Slayer episode so one maybe even feel as strong as one punch man okay at that point it would actually be a really boring game they wouldn't actually make that right but even then i still specifically never see any impact frames in games if you don't know about impact frames last video i explained them like this there's these couple of frames of pure black and white right at the moment of impact and you know logically makes no sense at all but it looks awesome if you know any games with impact frames let me know in the comments and nobody in the comments mentioned any games with impact frames well okay there is someone saying i think cc games uses a lot of in-game impact frames i might be really stupid but i don't know what he means with cc games googling it did not help me out someone please explain i really believe they didn't exist until i noticed sinitsu's special move has an impact frame finally and look how awesome this is why was this so hard to find can pretty easily be found in the good anime fighters why was this so hard to find? This totally works in game. And this doesn't have to be limited to anime games either. Any type of game with impact can have this. It's generally not included because of accessibility. It's pretty fair to argue that any kind of really over the top visual effects is not that accessible. But I don't know. I mean, how many people watch animes with impact frames? Are those not accessible? I think it can be accessible. Maybe not if like, like your, your grandma's playing Candy Crush and all of a sudden there's impact frames. <laughs> Of course, you wouldn't want impact frames and over-the-top visual effects for every little punch you do, but for high-intensity moments when you beat strong enemies or want to show how strong special weapons or abilities are, I really wish games would go all out more. So it's finally time to give this a try. I'll be using Blender and the game engine Unity for this. This time I want to make a high kick animation. I was inspired by this amazing Sanji kick animation. Then I had to decide if I was going to film myself for reference again and risk fucking straining a muscle or something. I can't even get it this high up. I, I literally can't. Or find some footage online. And then I found out the same guy I used reference from last time has kick animation reference as well. I cannot believe how amazing this channel is. So I started animating and it took me quite a while to get the poses right and understand what the hell he's even doing with his feet. But eventually I did it. Then I broke the bones again. I also completely skipped any anticipation and made him kick totally out of nowhere. Because if I want to prove this will work in a game, you want to be able to press a button and immediately do a kick. Now time to add impact in Unity. In regular animation, you can just draw specific impact frames. But in games for it to work in different scenarios, it requires something called custom image effect shaders, which is a very technical and complex subject I always postpone learning because it's scary and intimidating. But Unity now is a full screen shader graph for little baby artists like me who want to connect little dots instead. Let's go! So I spent an hour updating Unity and then I learned there are themes for Visual Studio. And look at all these cool color palettes. Oh, it's that late already? So I finally imported this animation into a new Unity project. Where the fuck are his hands and feet? So I added a wall for the guy to kick. He needs something to kick and apparently people felt bad for the default cube last time. So I added an orbit camera with Cinemachine for easy to control camera movement. And I made a simple camera animation. Then I added slow motion right at the moment of impact. And then it was time for camera shake. Like if only there was an easy to use asset for smooth shake. Now available in the Unity asset store. Okay, I'm sorry. It's just joke getting all already. But if you don't know, smooth shake is a tool I made for camera and object shakes for Unity. Because I felt like there wasn't a good smooth shake option for camera shakes in Unity. Like there is for video editing software. And I just released Smooth Shake 2.0, a completely overhauled version with runtime editing, animation curve, skill shake, FOV shake, and finally the most requested feature, compatibility with Cinemachine. So we can use this with the Orbit Cinemachine camera I made before, and boom! Link in the description if you want to add Smooth Shakes to your game and support the channel. I'm sorry, let's continue. I added a little background, and now I want him to break the wall. Luckily, I already learned how to do this while working on my game Drone Home. First devlog is out now, by the way. I use a Blender add-on called Cell Fracture to break the wall into pieces, then in Unity add a rigid body to all broken pieces and simply switch between them on impact. 
and boom! But it doesn't have enough power to it. I was thinking I could just add force to all pieces, but I don't know if that'll look nice. So I was having problems with the pieces glitching through the wall because of the round shape. So I turned it into a big box instead, and now it works perfectly! I still didn't like the way the wall breaks though. So I tried making a little system that spreads out velocity values based on the distance away from a point of impact. Six months ago, I would have never been able to think about doing something like this. But I learned so much about coding the last six months. I actually feel like I can do this now. I'm, I mean, um, it worked. Now for official effects. I spent a lot of time working on a new trill effect and learning about the official effects graph. And at some point in the tutorial I was following, he starts making a trill texture. But instead of drawing textures and struggling to try and make them seamless, I prefer to use a program called Substance Designer. I recently learned how to do this, which is also a spoiler to another video I'm working on. Shh. But look at this, this is way better than pretending I can draw. I took a lot of fucking around and following a tutorial with a lot of math I did not understand at all. But I did it! I made a very first style and easy to customize thrill. And now it looks like he has a supercharged foot. Okay, you know what? I don't really like it. So I made it more subtle and threw away most of the work I did. But I did learn a lot about thrill. <laughs> Sent him a little sparks and a flash at the impact point and boom! So after studying impact moments from enemy a little more in depth, I noticed they sometimes have multiple impact frames and I think that looks really cool. So last time I made this little black and white impact frame by just applying a really high amount of contrast because I had no idea how to make actual image effect shaders. But now with the new full screen shader graph, like I mentioned earlier, I'm finally going to try. It was actually really hard to find good tutorials online because it's so new and I ended up following this tutorial for an outline effect in hopes it would help me wrap my head around the basics and it kind of did. And after that I made three impact frames. One basic high contrast one with a glitchy line filter focusing on the character and the wall a full screen one and another one overlaying the original and when quickly looping through them on impact you get this I'm pretty happy with the result. This is definitely a lot more impact than last time. So this is pretty awesome, but the real challenge is gonna be combining this with an actual fighting game. Next up, I wanna make a little game prototype because actually making you feel strong is not just about impact frames and shake. It also has a lot to do with game design. I didn't mention this before, but you can have amazingly powerful animations, but if it takes 50 of those powerful hits to kill an enemy, you still don't feel powerful at all, which can be a problem, for example, in the Demon Slayer game. But on the other hand, if you have a thousand enemies surrounding you, you can easily kill them with a couple Couple hits like in One Piece Pirate Warriors, it sometimes feels like these enemies are just really weak instead of you feeling strong, though it's better. It's a hard balance to get right. So next up I want to try and prove my theory with an actual game prototype. And you know what, I think it's finally time to ditch this great character and make my first own proper custom character rig. I really want to try and convey personality through movement of an actual character next. I think it's finally time. But if you watch my learning sculpting in 7 days video, you know I still have a long way to go. <laughs> but that's not stopping me. Thanks for watching, see you guys next video. Something important I want to say, I'm going to be a third year game art student next year, which means I will have to do an internship and another full-time project for a company. Both things I won't be making videos about or probably not even talk about due to NDAs and stuff like that. I'll sadly won't be able to upload as much the following year. I'll try and see what I can do in the little free time I have. But the good news is in my fourth year, I will be working full-time on my own gaming graduation project. So I will be back. Hit the bell if you want to be notified and follow me on Twitter for updates. If everything goes well and my dreams come true, I can do this full-time from that point on and I will be able to upload a lot more you know it's a pretty ambitious dream we'll, we'll see what happens there's a lot of comments in a lot of languages but luckily tiktok has a translate option poor q okay <laughs> animation program crazy game rob world map world map download it to myself on a vacuum cleaner i don't know tiktok comments are really weird the ocarina song of zelda time very good use. Okay, that was fun, but... <laughs>